podcast. Well done. I, I, I don't know, maybe. So good evening, everybody. We just have, we just started the, um, the webinar. It is 7 p.m. We just need to wait another minute or two. We are face. We are live on Facebook on coronavirus and dentistry. We are recording this uh, webinar tonight, and that's going to be available for at least another five days. I'm here tonight with Debbie, and our topic is good evening, Debbie. Good evening, Fazil. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. We've planned this for over one year and wanted to do something together, I guess, in February. <laughs> yes, we were held back from other things. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then, as everybody knows, uh, COVID hit and everything got forgotten. But fortunately, we're able to be here today. Again, um, we got to wait another minute, maybe, until more attendees are uh, joining us. You are in Oregon today, right? I'm in smoky Oregon. What's going on in Oregon? Well, the fires have died down near us, but the, oh, what, wow. the air conditions are hazardous. So as you know okay. me going to Orange Theory Fitness at least five days a week, I haven't been uh -huh. in eight days. It's just killing me inside. <laughs> Wow, sorry to hear that. Yeah, I, I probably would have gone today, but luckily I talked to you and you talked me out of it because it's just, it's not good, but I love exercising, you know? Exactly, exactly. It's, it's not good here. It's, um, I hope it goes away. I hope things die down. Yeah, okay. I just checked Facebook, so we are live there. Nice. Good. Uh, again, one more time. Good evening. I'm very happy to be here. We've planned this at least uh, since a year ago. I was listening to Debbie in a podcast with Art Wiedemann. He's a dental CPA as well. And that was so great that I right, right away contacted Debbie and uh, we started being friends since then. Um, she's a fellow Trojan. She's a registered dental hygienist. She went to USC. Fight on. Yeah. And uh, just a few admin stuff before we go uh, start the webinar. So please use chat anytime you want to share something with Debbie or me. Uh, please use Q&A anytime you have a question. Um, and with that, everything taken care of. Debbie, please go ahead. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get here? How did we get here? And uh, share some of your wisdom. So first of all, as you know, our topic is how to operate a dental practice profitably. And I want to tell you tonight, what does your hygiene department have to do with it? And I hope you'll stay for the next 45 minutes at the very least, because I hope, I promised you, Fazel, that I only go about 40 minutes, but you know, I just love what I do. And I got a little carried away, so maybe I I'll take up the 45 minutes, but... Debbie, uh, you, you're the main attraction tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so Fossil's going to talk to us about some benchmarks, and he'll go deeper into the numbers than I typically do, but I had a dream. I was a very, I was barely a teenager, and I had a dream to become a dental hygienist, and then as you can see, uh, and as Fossil said, I graduated from USC, Fight on Trojans, and um, here I am, one of my first years as a dental hygienist and that's my niece that was my patient probably on a day off uh, the doctor I knew him I was his dental assistant years prior to being his hygienist and I went in there to clean my my niece's teeth for the first time when she was three years old and you can tell this really ages me because guys I'm going to show you some pictures of what life looks like now in the dental office and it's completely different, you know, and I wear loops and light and then we've got all the PPE, but here's where I graduated. Here's where I went back to be a clinical assistant professor. I taught clinical skills for the senior dental hygiene students. And I also, starting in 2000, I started teaching the dental students, the senior dental students, practice management skills until I think it was approximately 2005, they went to a hybrid where they have um, problem-based learning and also uh, lecture. So they took out the, the 
the course that I was teaching um, for practice management, unfortunately. And from there, I moved to Oregon in 2005, and I became a program director here at a hygiene school, starting that hygiene school. What I really love is helping dentists like you, and especially in a crisis situation where so many dentists tell me that they are fearful. They think we're going to have another closure of dental offices, and they don't believe that they can actually achieve their 2020 goals. And guys, I'm here to tell you that the dentists who started working with me in May and June, they have already achieved their dental practice goals and they will probably some of them exceed their goals. So, you know, unless you try, you'll never know. So I'm going to show you what you need to do. Now, one of the situations we have is what do you do? Like, guys, you probably don't have your hygienists, maybe some of you are here and your hygienists haven't come back to work. Sad situation, many dentists, you know, they called on their hygienists and said, hey, we're opening up, let's get back. And they never, they told me they never had their hygienists call them back or text them back. Never even returned the call to come back to the office. What a sad situation. And so what do you do? I'm gonna give you a little bit of hope. I'm gonna to talk to you about reactivation. How do you reactivate patients when you don't have a hygienist to see them? Well, I've got some solutions for you and I'm gonna share with you a solution for getting a hygienist in your office. And I'm also gonna share with you what to do to reactivate patients who need to come in when you don't have a hygienist. And then I wanna share with you patients, like how do you get your patients to want what they need when they come in? I mean, it's not rocket science, but I might be able to share some things with you that are new and different. And I believe that it's your hygiene department that is your biggest profit potential right now. It's important that you think outside of the box. The way you were thinking in January of 2020 is gotta be totally different now. I mean, I sit for hours, like I sat for hours today thinking about what can I share with you that's different than what you already know? And I'm thinking maybe some of you know, but even if you do know, who's doing this in your office? And that's the big thing is the implementation. Now guys, this, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a 10 year look at the S&P 500. Now Fazel, I know you probably are more into the S&P 500 than I am, but oh, what happened here? Um, but what I wanna say here is that you know, if you look at 10 years ago, where were we? And everybody was so afraid and doctors were afraid that they would never achieve their goals in 2020. But look at where we are. Let me see this. Now, this is as of June, 2020. I mean, three months ago, look where we were. I mean, I'm, if you guys are following the, the stocks and what's going on in our economy, people are recovering people have money and what are you doing now to number one get patients to, to return your call and schedule an appointment and what happens when they come back to your office and what are you doing today to make patients feel safe to come back to your office now i'm going to give you a few tips and i'm not going to actually focus on these but i want you to know that you need to look. Like who would have ever thought that we would be having people uh, out in space on the moon? You know, there's a, the space station. I don't know if you watched that launch recently and, and I you can go to YouTube and see these astronauts living on the space station. I mean, go back 20 years ago. Did we ever imagine that? I know I didn't. So always be looking to the future. Keep your head up. The doctors who had their head in the sand, the doctors who said, I'm just going to garden. I mean, I was doing fossil. You probably know I was doing a lot of webinars for about two months straight, three to five days a week. And a lot of dentists, hygienists were trying to get their dentists to come there. But their doctors said, I want to be with my kids at home. I don't want to come to the webinar. I want to garden. True story. And it's important that we keep our eyes focused on the future to look ahead. The other thing that's super important and what wasn't happening, imagine the dentist who wanted to stay gardening or wanted to be at home with their kids. They were not communicating with their team and their patients with the closure. So where are they now? 
those are the dentists that are most likely to not have patients returning right now because their patients don't know what to expect. What's different pre-COVID to what you're doing now when you opened? And that needs to be a communication between your patients and your team and your team and all the patients. One thing that I teach all of our clients is one piece of work that I do with the doctors. Now, I optimize the hygiene department but I believe that takes a doctor leader to inspire and empower the team with systems. The team needs to have the toolbox of systems to drive the practice forward. But doctors need to know why. Why do you do what you do? And you need to nail your vision. Like that's one thing. I actually have a workbook that I give my clients and they work on their vision and their why. It's more than just making beautiful teeth. And this is a book, I actually have the workbook and I have a PowerPoint presentation that I give my, my offices virtually now, everything I do is virtual. I'm not going in office at the time, uh, but we have virtual meetings. I meet with the doctor usually one or two times a month. Um, some doctors need more help, so we meet each Friday for an hour. I meet with their team and the doctor nails their why and we share that with the team. It's important that your team understands your why doctor. And it's like some of my doctors, a lot of them come to me because I'm all about complete health dentistry. And that's a very powerful word in today's world, especially post COVID. Patients want to feel safe. And when they know that you're concerned about their total health, and that's in everything you do, your website shows that when they walk in the office, they know that their health is your number one priority. They're most likely to continue coming to your office. That is what I have discovered is that patients who said, they'll tell me, I know Dr. So-and-so, he's or she is always on top of things. I knew I could come back here and feel safe. When you have a strong why, your patients are most likely to keep coming back. Now, I want to share with you my why. You see, I think, Fossil, I, I think this is what you wanted me to talk about was my why. I think he felt that this story was powerful, so I wanted to share it with you. You see, I started my business consulting and coaching, speaking all over, first in the United States and Canada. Now I've been all over the world, but in 2002, I had a patient come in, Polly, and I, I was working three days a week, and one of the days she came in, and it had been two years and so we reviewed her medical history. She had her mitral valve replaced recently and she took her pre-med. Now, as I'm measuring around, she never had perio before, but as I'm measuring around, I get to the lower left, number 19, and I get to an eight millimeter pocket and a six and another eight. And there are some fives and there's some bleeding. Now she hasn't been in for a while because she had her mitral valve replaced. She was overdue. Just like I know a lot of your patients are probably overdue today. But she hadn't come back because she wasn't feeling well after having her mitral valve replaced. So I know that she's going to need more than a cleaning today. And I take a PA. She had up-to-date full mouth series. We took bite wings, but I wanted to take a PA of number 19. My doctor comes in. He says, uh, we need to extract the tooth. There's an infection. And it was a perioendo infection. So she gets the tooth extracted. I'm gonna fast forward you a few months later. She's supposed to get the crown, the bridge, excuse me, the bridge placed, and she doesn't come in. And just like you do when your patient no shows, I hope you call and you see, you know, you're worried. Like, I mean, I've had patients that got in a car accident and didn't show up. And in Polly's case, she was in the hospital. And the family told us that she had a hemorrhagic stroke, that she had a blood infection. And when I hear this, I'm thinking like you might be thinking, what is going on? She had number 19, an infection. She had a hemorrhagic stroke on the left side of her brain. They said if she made it through, she would be like a vegetable. 
And over the next 10 days, as we called back to check in on Polly, what we found was that she lost her life 10 days later. She ended up dying because her kidneys shut down. Her whole body just shut down. And in the end, what she died from, if you didn't guess already, is endocarditis. And the reason why this story is so powerful and why, you know, remember I started my career as coaching and I was doing a lot of speaking and I was speaking about the mouth body connection all the way back in 2000. We were getting a lot of research at that point and there's a lot more research now. Okay. But at this point I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like I'm really upset that she had this tooth infection and ends up with endocarditis. And it wasn't just my patient. You know, Polly could have been your patient. It could have been your aunt, your sister, your grandmother. And I want you to know that this was my mother. And it's my why I do what I do. Every time I speak, every time I'm working with clients, when I'm working with the hygienists, some of the hygienists don't know what to say. The team members, most of the front office team members that I work with, maybe I'm preaching to the choir, but they don't know what to say. And there are so many dentists that, and I'm going to share with you some of the dentists that I've been able to work as a temp because I know there aren't any hygienists to work. And I've actually wanted to put myself in that position post COVID. What is it like to wear all the PPE? And I have come into so many dentists here in the state of Oregon. I'm normally, you know, I practice most of my life in California, Southern California. Now I'm practicing more than ever because I'm a licensed hygienist in Oregon. Totally different. Newport Beach, Portland, Oregon. Newport Beach, everybody wants to hear about how to have perfect teeth. And here in Portland, Oregon, the dentists are like, don't scare my patient. They've never had a hygienist come in and talk about how the diabetes and the high blood pressure medication is contributing to the bleeding in their mouth. And I want to ask you, can you please give me a thumbs up, guys, or, or a yes? Will you help me conquer this disease process? We have a lot of work to do, guys. I mean, a lot of my clients, I mean, I'm a California hygienist. I work with a lot of dentists coaching their teams in California, and it's still happening there. But the minute I go east of the Mississippi River, it's even worse. People do not understand that connection. And doctors, and I want you to know that it's super important that your team feels empowered. And that's what I'm doing is helping to come alongside the doctors, helping them to empower their team. And as I work with your team, I'm helping to empower them. I'm here tonight because I truly believe that your hygiene department is your biggest asset. When I was doing all my webinars back in March, April, and even into May, it was, I guess, more like, I know my first webinar was March 25th, and I didn't stop until Memorial Day week. Um, there were a lot of dentists that were very skeptical about achieving their goals for 2020. And those dentists that kept their heads high, facing forward are the ones that now I'm walking alongside of them and they're achieving their goals. I wanna ask you, doctor, these are questions to know. If you can not only achieve your goals this year, because we've got, Fazel, I think we've got almost, we've got about three months left for them. And the doctors who are willing to, to keep their heads looking forward and to create a strategy, they can still probably, hopefully, achieve their goals. They're not going to be taking off two weeks between Christmas and, you know, December 15th to the end of December. They're not going to take off this year. They're going to have to work, but you can still achieve your goals. But think about these. I mean, as a college student, I'm going to tell you guys, you saw that picture of me. I'm, I'm going to tell you my age. I have a granddaughter. She just started college. And I'm just so excited to read her college books and see how critical thinking skills are a very important key factor in college. In the books that 
they have to buy their $300 books. And I was reading her college English. It was really interesting. And I want you to put your critical thinking cap on. Does your hygiene department currently, right now, today, I don't care if you're a small office. I don't care if you have eight or 900 patients, especially if you have eight or 900 patients, total active patients, you should have a hygiene department that's producing 30 plus percent of your total office production. Right that, now, it needs to be- That'd happening. be a question. Yeah. That's great. Because uh, first of all, does that, that's a question from Jeff. Does the 30% include x-rays and exams? Good question, Jeff. It does not include exams. And the reason why is because um, the exams have to be billed under the doctor. It's, you know, exams are where we make a diagnosis and hygienists, I don't know of any hygienist that can legally diagnose. So good question. You're gonna count all hygiene procedures, but you're not gonna include, for example, a, a, if somebody does an impression for a night guard that gets billed under doctor's production. It also, the x-rays get billed under hygiene. So, and I'm, I'm gonna share with you, you can see here my email address at the bottom of the slide if you um, wanna ask me more details about that. Thank you. Um, what percent of your hygiene patients come from their hygiene appointment and they're ready to schedule for restorative care. I believe that 80% of the doctor's schedule should come because of hygiene patient appointments. The other 10% is gonna be emergency patients and also new patients, or it could be instead of emergency patients, combine that with what are patients that called to schedule their appointment because they thought oh, I've got a cavity, and that doesn't happen too often. So it really needs to come from the hygiene department. Doctor, when you go in there to do your exam, you want your patient to have seen what's going on in their mouth, and the patient, your hygienist is not diagnosing. They're actually sharing with the patient what they see. When I work as a temporary hygienist right now, maybe like this week I'm not working as a hygienist, but like next week I'll work one day, and when I go in, I don't know the doctor, but I'll say, doctor, um, what would you like me to do? Well, most of the doctors say, yeah, go ahead. Some of the doctors in Oregon are like, no, I don't want you to say anything to the patient. Let me be the one, which I feel like, like I had a patient last week who had 10 areas of root decay. Some of them were under the crown. And I know that doctor doesn't want me to tell him what I see but I couldn't help myself. I wrote it down on a post-it note because it was coming up on 5 p.m. and I was supposed to leave at five. And I thought he could be there for another half hour doing an exam. And sure enough, he ended up looking over at my post-it note and I had written down every area for him to already see that. And some of the areas he had to keep looking back on it. I mean, I think the hygienist is there to support you, doctor. And if we can do something to help you save time and more easily see areas where there's a hole in the tooth, I, I'm all for it. And I hope the doctors on this webinar are as well, because I believe that, you know, I was able to leave the office after cleaning up the room and turning everything around and all this PPE and, you know, breaking down 530, I finally got to leave. But if I wouldn't have written out everything that the doctor should check, we would have been in there a lot longer. You know, one of the things that's happening right now is your patients are overdue. And you need to know that if you have a patient with moderate to severe gingivitis, with no radiographic bone loss, and that means that they are gonna get a gingivitis treatment. It's a four, three, four, six. And I'm telling you that dentists, especially in California, I think we might have a lot of California dentists here, but all over the United States, when I work with a client on the, the East Coast or in California, they, I come in, I used to come in, be there for a day and a half, and the second day I'd come in there, guess what? We got reimbursed for that gingivitis because they're getting electronic deposits the next day for the previous day's gingivitis treatment because I'm sharing with the teams what you bill. How do you write a narrative for this? What does the insurance company want to see for a 4346 gingivitis patient? And I'm noticing all the 
doctors I'm working with right now, nobody has more than 20% of their adult patients who have undergone a 4,000 code. And I'm telling you, if you look at the AAP and our CDC, way back in 2012, it was 46 million Americans that are adults have some level of gum disease. And I tell you, you should be at least 40% of your adult patients who have had a 4,000 code. So check those. Do you have less than 10% open holes in your schedule? Now, in today's world, since post-pandemic, I'm discovering there aren't that many holes in your schedule. In fact, my the doctors who are working with me don't have enough open holes in their schedule because we're getting those patients back in. Patients who needed a hygiene appointment and now we we know they know what to say to get the patients to schedule. And I want to ask you, doctor, do your team members have systems? Can they look up a system for the, if a temp hygienist comes to your office to work, can they open a book and see, do you use the Florida probe? Do you have an assistant that comes in? How do they know if you use fluoride varnish? I mean, I was in that office last week, they didn't have fluoride varnish. And I didn't know that. You know, I didn't know, like some offices, the doctors don't even do uh, an occlusal guard. This is Oregon, guys. It's a totally different world than Newport Beach, California. So super important is that you have systems and they're written out. And you, you have any new employee, like there's been a lot of change in employees in your office. So is that in a place, like our clients have access to a web portal of all their systems. Now the big challenge here is a lot of you here probably still don't have enough hygienists to take care of all the patients that need a hygiene appointment. And why is that happening? I mean, honestly, I think that hygienists, I, I've spoken to colleagues that said, Debbie, I was getting paid. I cannot believe this, but in Oregon, hygienists told me that they were getting paid very well to stay at home. Now, I saw that um, Trump, I think, is still giving some states and the hygienists can still get money. I'm temping in offices just because the hygienists don't want to work that much right now. I'm also finding that some offices, the hygienists have quit. I've also talked sad story to other dentists who the hygienists just wouldn't even contact them to come back. And that has to be the communication factor that like there was a, a, a uh, synapse in the communication over this COVID shutdown. I don't know what happened. I can't imagine never contacting my employer about coming back or not coming back. There are many hygienists I know that they are at home. Their kids are being, they're, they're doing virtual school, so they've got to be home with them. The church where we go, which is, um, we're going online to Mariner's Christian Church in Newport Beach. Some of you might know that. And they actually, I'm really excited to say that that church put together these pods for the kids, you know, like maybe groups of four children, and then they have people to support the four-year-olds or the, the six-year-olds and their learning. You know, the four-year-olds, they need to go to daycare and the five-year-olds, how do kindergartners focus on kindergarten? I mean, a lot of kindergartners are right now in virtual school. And it's great when you have a support system to help with that, which many dental hygienists and dental professionals don't, so they haven't returned. So this is me. I actually took some pictures of all the PPE that I'm wearing. I mean, I'm covered from here all the way to my knees. Um, I've got a K95 and a level three mask most of the time. Um, I also have the shield that I wear and I have these cute little bonnets that one of the dental assistants at an office made and I bought some from her. Um, now, the other thing that's happening is we do have, uh, they did graduate from USC. I think we have some Trojans here, Fuzzle, and maybe we have some Bruins and, and other uh, students on here that just graduated, and congratulations on your graduation. The sad part is that I think it was I think it was May 15th, they had a virtual graduation for USC and it was very bittersweet. Um, but I do wanna say congratulations to those dentists. So what I'm doing is I'm suggesting some temp 
uh, I'm going to give you some links to go and set up a profile where you can get a temp hygienist. And it's one thing that I have been doing. So please feel free to reach out to me. I am, uh, I do charge a small fee, but I am helping dentists to find a hygienist through two of these different sites. I look through the resumes. I help the doctors to write the best resume and I communicate with the hygienist through these apps as well. Now there are many states where there are young dentists who were displaced during COVID and they needed to work. And I have worked with these dentists who were young and I know they, we all went, they went through the hygiene training with me. And so they are previous clients who had reached out and I have those dentists seeing the hygiene patients that can't be seen by a hygienist. And I don't, typically recommend a dentist do hygiene, but in the situation we're in. And I wanna share with you guys some things in just a moment of why I'm recommending the patients see a dentist. So I'm, let me share, be patient with me because some of you might be about to vomit from me saying that, but I, I don't normally say that, but I wanna show you what's happening and how I'm helping these dentists to get patients on their schedule who need hygiene and I'm gonna give you a clue right now, these hygiene patients also have restorative dentistry needs. So that's part of the clue here. So I wanted to give you these two websites, ondm.com. Um, they started in Portland, Oregon. They are an Oregon company. If you're in California, I know they have, uh, on Facebook, uh, they have a group, you know, Dental Peeps Network is California, Los Angeles, Orange County, I'm a moderator for Orange County because that's where I'm from. And then San Diego, San Francisco, I think even Sacramento. And you can actually, through on DM, they'll post it out. And on DM will also text message your job opportunity, whether it's a temp hygienist or um, somebody that you're looking for permanently. And on DM is very cost effective. Now, the other one I recommend, and this one is very, um, specific to different states like Oregon is not a place where we have a lot of hygienists who have listed their resumes on dentalpost.net. But I know Tanya Lanthier, she's also a hygienist. She started Dental Post about 10 years ago. And you get the opportunity to post your resume and then you can also look for hygienists who have their resume posted. They do not, they're not as, um, proactive as on DM, which you'll get a text message sent out for any hygienist who's looking for a job, or I'm also open to doing some temp work night right now to help out with the, the um, situation of no hygienist being available. So like today, I got a, a message texted to me that there's a job available. And on DM is very cost effective. It's a lot less money than going through one of your temp agencies that's charging you like you know, 60, 70, $100 an hour because their fees tacked onto it. So I highly recommend these for looking. Um, one thing I wanted to share with you and just, um, I wanted to show with you what I'm doing to help my dentist right now. So we're gonna talk about patient reactivation. And this is where I have been starting with the doctors who have been working with me, is where do you go first to reactivate your patients. So let me see if I have an, okay. I want to tell you this. The place you need to start is to run your recare report. So one thing that I've done for you guys is I'm gonna show you a snapshot. And if you have Eagle Soft, Dentrix, or Open Dental, I'm happy to do this snapshot for you. I mean, if you go to Dental Intel, it's $500 for the snapshot, I believe. And then if you wanted to keep it, it's a thousand or $900 with a year contract. If you like what you see, let me know, send me an email because, or you can grab this link right here or email us because I'm happy to set you up with this. And for one month, it's no cost to you. And I'm doing that because you're on this webinar tonight. And as Fazel knows, I would love to help any, I'm just on a mission to help as many dentists recover. And I have been able to help you recover those that are willing to do something about this. So I wanted to share with you, I, can, um, I have this, it's all HIPAA compliant. So I'm going to share with you right now. Um, this is the performance board. This is what dental intel looks like. And so the first 
place that I go is I want to show you, um, this is a client that just, I think if I pulled up the right one here, let me see here. They have, I think, let me see which one this is. I pulled up two clients ahead of time here. Um, this is a client that just, just started doing something small with me. So you'll see here that they actually rescheduled seven patients, and I believe that was today. So congratulations to this office. Now, where I'm going right here, I want to go to the perio patients. These are period patients, and by the way, in case I went too fast for you, let me go back there again. So this is zero to six months. So these people haven't been in for the last six months. And I believe that your perio patients are essential care patients. And the reason why I'm saying, even if you don't have a hygienist that can see these patients, I, want, I do want you to see this. So you can see this is all HIPAA compliant. You can't tell which office this is. Um, and you cannot see the patient's name. I've blocked it out. But I do want you to see something here. This uh, Debbie, yes. excuse me, we can't see anything. Oh, you can't. Thank you for no. telling me. Yeah. Okay. Let me know if you can see now. Thank you for telling me. Can you see now? Oh, no problem. No. Okay. I think you have to um, stop sharing those oh, okay. old um, Here it is. Now can you see it? Slides. No. No? <laughs> Okay, how about this? <laughs> now it's good. Yeah. Good. Okay, so guys, let me take okay. you back through that. Thank you for telling me. Oh, no so problem. I'm going to take you. So this is dental intel. So um, as you can see, it's all HIPAA compliant. I actually could switch it to HIPAA compliant because this is my client, and I can always look. I can look on my iPhone. I have an app and it recognizes me. It logs in by my face. And as a client of Dental Intel, um, you have HIPAA secure information and your team members. I always teach the hygienists and the entire team how to look at this. And each team member has their own numbers that they're looking at and they have a system that goes with the numbers here to drive the practice forward towards success. So the first thing I work on right now with a client is reactivation. So these are, I'm gonna show you perio patients. I believe your perio patients, it's essential. A lot of these perio patients, I've been able to look them up with the doctor or the office manager or the hygienist. I work with either one or both, all of them. Uh, sometimes I meet with the entire team and we'll go through this. And I want you to see this patient is a paro patient. They have an $18,000 treatment plan. Now, what are they saying and what are they doing? They decided, um, you can see there's no last attempt. So we just started, I remember I told you, we just started working together and they are calling the patients and they are actually, this office is actually getting um, all my offices, I recommend care credit, but not everybody can get care credit. <laughs> not every patient qualifies and you doctor get hit with a percentage. So there's another company that I recommend and you can email me when I, you have my email address and I'll tell you who they are and introduce you to them because they can finance 90 plus percent of the patients and you doctor aren't hit with a percentage. So if your patient puts any of this, like here's a $2,500 one, $1,300, $85. I mean, you know, I, they did not schedule. I don't know what's going on with this patient. They haven't been scheduled. It's $85. Um, but we can actually look at this and I go through this with them. A lot of these perio patients, I consider them essential because when I ask them about the medical history, here they are with high blood pressure, diabetes, Crohn's disease, um, and we know from 2019 a wealth of research on the connection between Alzheimer's and gum disease. So these are patients we've got to get them in right now. And if you don't have openings for the next two months in your schedule, or you don't have a hygienist that can cover this, here's where I'm getting the office to schedule these patients on doctor's schedule. The assistant, if they need an FMX or updated x-rays, the assistant knows to take those x-rays, doctors doing the exam, reevaluating this treatment that was planned six plus months ago, and we have enough time scheduled on doctor's side to complete some of this treatment. And now doctor's role, what I'm teaching the doctor is, it's either health or disease. If we have 30% 
moderate to severe gingivitis and we have no radiographic bone loss, they are going to be scheduled for gingivitis. And we also know gingivitis doesn't just get put on the schedule six months later. They are gonna come back in two to four weeks normally, could be four to six weeks, and they are gonna have hopefully a prophy, but we're gonna reevaluate. And if they're healthy, which 90% of the time these patients will be healthy after gingivitis, then we do a prophy and we can determine do they come back in six months or four months or three. So you can see that at the very least here, we're getting these patients with restorative care on doctor's schedule. Most of the doctors do have openings. It's the hygienist that doesn't. Look, here's just all of these patients that need to come in. Here are the prophy patients that need to come in. And what are we doing with these big treatment plans? And I'm gonna share with you in just a moment. So I wanted to share with you, I have another, this is my other client that I wanted to share with you, same thing. Um, started out with the same thing and they have a, a practice that's half the size of the other office I just shared with you. Um, so you can see here, that they are also, I think they're working on scheduling their patients. So they rescheduled seven patients. Now, before they started working with me, because they're like, I work as an accountability partner with your team to help you get implementation. So you can see both these offices started implementing. We can see we've got 90,000 in opportunities here, just sitting and waiting. So here again, we have the perio patients, okay? So this office here, you can see, I've been working with these guys a little longer. And so they've got, they, you can see they on February 20th, they actually made a call to that patient. Um, some of these, I think they're not documenting in dental intel. But I did wanna share with you, one of the things that's driving profitability is, and as I told you, like one of my tips for you was to look, you always have to look. And it's like every day when I start my day, I have coffee and I just think, I mean, I spent a couple hours today thinking, 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 how can I best serve you here tonight? And I want you to know that when you get to the office each morning, your team doctor needs to have reviewed their areas of, of potential, their opportunities. Look at this. This day is, this is today, okay? Today they had $1,554 with two patients. They owe money. So they are with Verity. That's the company that these patients didn't qualify for care credit. So Verity, they hopefully just got Verity this week and they'll be able to enroll the patients into a payment plan with Verity. Very simple. And by the way, Verity guarantees doctor that they will give you up to $1,500 of that patient money, even if the patient defaulted. Look at all this unscheduled treatment here. Oh my gosh, 11 patients came in today with unscheduled treatment. So what am I doing is I'm teaching the team how to read these numbers here. So the assistants, there are two assistants in this office and they switch off. So maybe today, um, Susan was the assistant that reviewed this. She and the front office people know, they're saying there's an AR balance. And the assistant also knows that they've got to make sure that this patient goes to the front to pay. Um, this patient here, I think they, um, this one here, this is future hygiene. Look, they're gonna say when Susan reports in the team huddle, which I don't care, I've worked with doctors. There were four dentists, six hygienists in the office. 10 minutes is all it took, but everybody knows it's boom, boom, boom. We've gotta get Mary, Mrs. Smith needs to come in for her hygiene appointment. She owes $29. And this is the assistant, Susan, that's reporting on this. We've got the hygienist. I used to have a form and the hygienist had to go through the charts or go through the electronic charts, the records on the computer. Now, if you have dental intel, it's right here, okay? So I'm Debbie, I'm the hygienist. I'm going, okay, Mrs. Smith is coming in at eight o'clock today. I'm gonna to talk to her about the implant and she's got a bridge and I'm gonna show her that. Um, she has not had an FMX in six years and I, as the hygienist know, is gonna take me 10 minutes to do an FMX. I can snap that out real quickly for you, doctor. 
Um, if not, you know, we're going to have to get her back when we get the treatment plan. When she's scheduled for a treatment, maybe we'll do the FMX at that time, but I know she needs an FMX. Look at this patient, $4,746. Well, number one, they've now they know what to say. The hygienist knows what to say. And she or he, the hygienist, is going to talk about what to say. I'm going to show you guys in a few minutes what to do with that. So I want to share with you, because I told you it depends on systems. Doctor, you've got to have systems in place, and your team needs to know how to run each of these different systems. So let me switch back here to my, um, here's where I was on my PowerPoint. Okay, so um, here's where you can get that snapshot if you'd like. Um, it's no cost to you. I mean, it it's, takes us five minutes to get this set up. You'll get a link. You download the link, load the link onto your computer, and then you and I meet, and I'll walk you through everything. I mean, there's a lot more going on. The other thing with reactivation of your patients, you can't just, you know, a lot of offices, when I first start working with them, they're like, oh, we already called, and she couldn't come in. Well, you know, when was the last time you called them? Well, two months ago, or when we first came back in May or June 1st. You gotta have different ways to contact your patient. I recommend, and I believe there's been numerous studies of thousands of patients, and the majority of people in today's world, I know it's my aunt, it was both my aunts. One of them was in her 90s before she died a year ago, and my other aunt is gonna be 88. They both, I just texted with my aunt today. They love text. I would rather you text me than call me. In fact, my phone, Fossil, I don't know if you called me, but it says this, my phone does not take messages. I have too many messages. I have my office phone and, and I got you know messages there. I've got how many emails? Please just text me, you know? And that's what I want my dentist and my, my, any practitioner that I go to, if I'm getting a massage or a facial, just text me. My hairdresser, just text me. And then if you don't get a, a message back from your patient, if they don't call, then you can pick up the phone. If you are calling all your patients, you need to immediately text them. Don't bother listening to that, putting a voicemail on there. God forbid you're saying um, it's Debbie at Dr. Jones office and you haven't had your hygiene appointment since last year. I mean, I don't know that that's cool to do. It, you know, I don't suggest that you do that. If you're gonna leave a message, it's short, short and sweet. This is Debbie at Dr. Jones office. We miss you, it's time, give us a call, boom. And they're like calling back going, I know you, you know. But then I suggest that you text message and then everything like I recommend um, Solution Reach. I love them as they're very innovative and Solution Reach has a very simple where you just copy and everything is the whole records there what's going on. So once the patients come in and I showed you guys all those patients with outstanding treatment, how do you get them to want what they need? And I truly believe that it's not just one time you tell them about the implant. Not everybody's gonna accept treatment right now today. It could be three years from now. But one of the things that I teach is that you're gonna be different. I really highly recommend, I wanna ask you, what are you doing that's different from that dentist with a stone's throw away from you? How are you different? How do you stand out? Are you, is your patient laying back in the chair as you're talking to them? I always recommend, in fact, I put together uh, many years ago, a down to a science time management formula. And there's a specific time where the hygienist or even your assistant is there talking with the patient for a minute or two. We always take blood pressure annually. And if you're gonna give anesthetic, you're gonna take blood pressure. That for sure is different. You have no idea how many times they take blood pressure of a patient and they're like, wow, nobody did this before. And there's the blood pressure cuff on the side. I'm the temp hygienist. And I thought that's what they normally did because it's sitting there on the counter. But no, I guess they don't do it every time. But what are you doing that makes you stand out? And the other thing is, um, how do you know what your patient values? You know, 
everybody's different. And what are the things that patients value? I want to ask you guys. I want to know that some people are still here. Can you guys, they can see my slides okay now? It's all showing up okay, I think. Um, yes, I would like does. to hear it from does. you guys. Like, I want to put my glasses back on. I want to know, what do you think? Like, think back today to the patients that you saw, and what do you think they valued? Uh, if you guys uh, like to talk, you just need to raise hands, and then I can make everyone talk. Or uh, if you like to respond, please use the chat or Q and A. So it's really important. The only I believe the easiest thing you can do to get your patient yeah. to want what they need is to understand what is valuable to them. Let's see if somebody. Yeah. Honesty, conservative dentistry. Okay. Jeff is saying, yeah. And I want to ask you, thanks, Jeff. Um, how do your patients know that you're on by honest, like they value honesty. And so how do they know that you're being honest? Jeff, actually, um, I have unmuted you if you like to talk. Can you hear me? We can, I can hear, hear you. I can hear you, Jeff. Thank oh. you so much, doctor. I wasn't sure if my computer had a microphone. Uh, <laughs> hey, thank you so much for being here and, and willing to chat. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I have kind of a spiel, I guess I give them, but uh, in general, I usually, I think through the process with them verbally, where I talk about the kind of treatment options and how I would uh, treatment plan if it was my tooth or my mother's or something uh -huh. like that. That's, that's generally how I do it. And I am a very conservative dentist. And so uh, you might call me a watch factory, I guess. But, uh, you know, I plant the seed and then we discuss it routinely. So is it okay if I kind of challenge, give you some critical thinking here? <laughs> kind sure. of like, Always. so I want to ask you a question. So you just said that you're kind of a watch Back, is, did you say you have a lot of watches? I do. I, I monitor things. Um, you know, I'm not one of the kind of guys that uh, will look at a silver filling and automatically tell the patient they need a crown or that. Oh, sort of thing. I understand. I agree with you. Um, so one of the things is I want to ask you. So I had some old silver fillings. I had them placed. Uh, they were on my first molars when I was six years old, amalgams. And then I was about 30 years old. And if you looked with your loops and light, you would see that there were, there, there was some bacteria sneaking in and they were looking kind of ragged. So if you were to watch those and I asked you, is that the best you can do for me? What do you think you would say? Uh, um, you know, I, I usually tell them that as long as you uh, see me routinely and you don't disappear on me, that we will, you know, can keep an eye on it. And if it worsens, uh, we'll be able to see it. Where do you practice? Huntington Beach, down the street. You do? Me. Do you know Frank Curry? Uh, I do, actually. I know Frank well. Well, guess what? I was his hygienist. Yeah, he's got a great office. You may have seen me walk in there, try and get an associateship once or twice. <laughs> oh, everybody wants that practice. <laughs> so anyways, I was this hygienist and um, I was about 35 years of age and he replaced those silver fillings with onlays. And I'm, uh, you can tell now I, I graduated a long time ago. That was a long time ago when I was 35. It seems like yesterday, but God willing, I haven't, I'm overdue for my hygiene appointment and some bite wing x-rays, but I think that they're still solid. And, you know, I feel like it's the very best that he could offer me was the gold onlays. They're still there. And I imagine, you know, the cost of a gold onlay is probably twice as much money many decades later. And, and, you know, they were done once and that's it. I, I think that they'll last the rest of my life. Agreed. Yeah, I, I think uh, I and I understand what you're saying. Uh, I guess I just I do think on a financial side of things, you know, for the, my patients as well. And, you know, a, a gold onlay or even a, an Emacs, you know, onlay isn't uh, not everybody's walking around with an extra three to five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I understand. Um, so my insurance, my insurance at the time paid for a part of it. And anyways, that's a long story. It's a long time ago. So thank you so much. Yeah. And I'm, I'm at a network with all insurances. So it can get costly, I guess, quickly. Love it. Check out Verity. Contact me and I'll put you in touch with Verity because then your patients can afford to get these things done. And yeah. Okay. Will do. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So I did want to share with you Thank guys, you. like one of the things that I teach, do we have more comments? Uh, we have no comments. Okay, great. So I did want to say one of, there are several things that I teach. I can't, I don't have much more time now. Fosalite went over. Oh my gosh. I get so excited over this. I love helping the doctors. Um, I did want to tell you that I teach certain questions to ask. I believe that we need to be like detectives. And I think that it really shows how much we care. And I, you know, it's questions like, why did you choose our office? When they're first your patient, what is important to you about your dentist? And when you hear these answers, like, why did you choose our office? Well, you know, the reason why I chose Dr. Curry's office is because I heard that he does the best dentistry in all of Orange County. And I know from the pictures I saw on your website that the teeth are gorgeous, especially the front teeth. And oh, really, well, were you looking to get something done to your front teeth? And like, well, yeah, you know, I, I noticed that they're kind of getting short in the front. So, okay, well, great. We're going to take some pictures and I'll show doctor during the exam. That's the conversation I would have. What's important to you about your dentist? Well, I don't want any, oh, by the way, when somebody answers like I just answered, you know, what do you think is their, their value? Pain, money, or aesthetics? Aesthetics, right? And then when you say to your patient, what's important about your dentist? Well, I don't wanna to go to a dentist that tells me I need all this work done. I went to a dentist and they told me I had 10 cavities and I didn't believe them, so that's why I came here. What do you think is value to that patient? Money. They don't want to spend money. They want to save money. That's their value. So these questions help you to understand what could be objections or what your patient wants. If I see anything suspicious, or you could say, if I see anything abnormal, if I see anything out of the ordinary, um, do I have permission to show you what I see? As the temp hygienist, I always ask that. And the majority of time, people will, patients say, of course, please show me. I'll say, what is one thing that we can do today to improve your smile? And this is a super simple one. Like I worked for Dr. Curry for 10 years and I knew the patients really well. So, and I like to make patients smile because everybody's so uptight. So I'd say, if you won the lottery, what would you, and I'd wink, what would you choose to do? How would, what would you like your smile to look like? And I teach the assistants to say that if there's one thing we can do for you today, what would that be? You have no idea how many patients will say, I just want my teeth whiter. I just want my teeth straighter, like super simple. There's more questions I could teach you, but I don't have all that time for you. But um, this is hygienist reviewing unscheduled treatment, always like I showed you with the dental intel. And this is what you can say as the hygienist, Mr. Carter, I noticed the last time you're here with Dr. Jeff, that he discovered or he talked to you or he mentioned whatever feels comfortable like i don't want to build robots out of your team members so i'm giving you options um he mentioned blah 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 and i see that you still need to complete that treatment to prevent or you know whatever you know the value of that patient is you attach the benefit so what i would say to jeff i mean i love that your patients think you're conservative i would love to go to a conservative dentist like you honestly to tell you the truth i might look you up if i need a dentist and i'm in orange county because i don't want somebody saying i have all these cavities uh if i have incipient caries like help me to reverse that with fluoride varnish like i put fluoride varnish around my onlays to prevent caries because that is my value is having a healthy mouth. Health is a value. Aesthetics is a value. Saving money is a value to them. Um, not having pain is another value. And these are the things 
that you need to understand about your patients. What I teach is something called R2R, it's a reason to return, and the value and benefit and the reason why they need to come back all becomes part of the patient's record where each team member can look and see what we need to talk to them about. Is aesthetics valuable or is it saving money, blah, blah, blah. Super important, like I told you guys, communication is key. What is it that all of you as a team say consistently? Nix that word cleaning, nix that word cancellation. You guys don't want cancellations. You want people to only call to change an appointment. Change it is, is an exchange and cancel means nix, it's gone. I want you guys before we leave tonight to understand why you're doing it. it needs to be deeper than a beautiful smile and share your vision with your patients and your team and always find ways to empower and build up each other as a team. I want you guys to walk away knowing that you guys have a lot of hope. I mean, my clients right now are making a lot of money, not just productivity. No, the hygienists are getting bonuses, the team is getting bonuses, and the doctors, they're stashing cash. And Fazl, you can tell them about it personally. It's called cash reserves. That's what you guys missed during the pandemic when you were shut down. You went through your cash reserves. And if you want to build cash reserves, you need to work on your hygiene department because I know for sure you can get your cash reserves built up bigger than ever. And that's what I'm hearing from my clients, dental CPAs. I always work with their dental CPAs like Fossil. And I want you guys to know that what you were doing before the pandemic, forget about it. We got to do things differently. You got to step outside of your box. You cannot have a box. So your next step after tonight, I want to help you. So schedule the revenue recovery session. We'll look at those numbers. And if you don't have EagleSoft, Dentrix, or Open Dental, I can still get your numbers and help walk you through how to recover quickly from this terrible situation of shutting down for three months. Most of you were shut down for three months. Fazl, thank you so much. I really, I'm very appreciative that you invited me to be here. Well, thank you very much. You actually not a guest, you're a host today, mm -hmm. and thanks well. much. Uh, and this is very interesting because uh, this uh, topic, how to operate the dental practice profitably, has many, many sides and details. And uh, this time, Debbie was there to help with the top line a little bit and hygiene. I think last time we had a gentleman, Doc Sites for Marketing. So, and I'm trying to pretty much have this one, you know, we're changing people that add value to the practice. And uh, for sure, that was uh, a lot of fun listening to you tonight, Debbie. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I, I wanted to keep it short. I know you guys are probably tired, but I just love it. And I just could go on and on telling you. And thank you. I appreciate the time. No problem. And it's interesting because everybody who started listening to us, it's still there. Oh. We have a lot of viewers on Facebook, so that's uh, great. Okay, if uh, no one has any questions, um, Debbie, would you please um, take down the slides so I can yes, bring up course. my slides? Of course. Thank you. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, again, uh, I'm Fazel, so pretty much uh, uh, some of you guys might already know me or have uh, um, attended some of my webinars. The next webinars, usually we have a webinar once a week, and then uh, the way I do it is uh, I have uh, my topics sometimes with, uh, let's say, uh, related topics. And uh, this month, uh, we're going to be there with Amy Borden. She's a dental attorney. Uh, next week, we are going to talk about tax and financial planning to associate dentists. Then uh, again, next week, we are going to be here with DDS Match. So if you want to buy a practice or sell a practice, they have great, great uh, resources. And uh, also, we are going to be here with Bank of the West. And they're a little bit different than maybe some of the other banks. So that's uh, important for you guys to know how each of these banks uh, works things underwrites and uh, that's our intention. 
also in the fall, we have planned 12 webinars. Uh, one very interesting one is for all of the uh, startups, a uh, very specific and also tax and financial planning for the year end uh, is, is in October. We are going to talk about uh, R&D tax credit, about anything that we need to do because of COVID this year, because October and November are usually those months that we CPAs usually start talking to our clients, review what was happening in the past eight, nine, 10 months, and pretty much see if we can, what we can do in terms of tax planning. We are going to talk about tax planning a little bit today as well. Um, good, almost everybody is still here. A little bit about me. Uh, well, I've earned my master's degree in business taxation from USC. I have another graduate certificate in uh, financial planning. I'm a CPA specialized in, in mostly dental. Uh, also, I went to law school. I have a training as a valuator and a financial analyst as well. I started my firm in 2008. We are a pretty straightforward uh, you know, CPA firm with taxes, accounting, consulting, and financial planning. Uh, also, I'm assisting uh, with startups, acquisitions, very much financial due diligence, valuation, and transitions of dental practices. I help with creation of partnerships, reviewing of the leases, creating corporations, all kinds of problems that might happen. We have many, many, we used to have a lot of events in person. Now we have uh, at least once a week a webinar. Uh, and very important to mention, we do not accept any commissions, no kickbacks, no referrals from anyone. And uh, we have only the best uh, interest of our clients uh, and we try and we, we won't have any conflicts of interest. So tonight, pretty much we're talking about statistics and metrics. Uh, you are here to know, to understand a little bit better your paperwork, your numbers, your overhead, your profitability. It's all about numbers. Uh, unfortunately, what I usually see is that a lot of my clients, people that I consult with, they love dentistry, they're great dentists, but for some reason, they're afraid of numbers. So I wanna make sure that you're a little bit more familiar with the numbers. Not knowing it is very costly, especially if you don't work with somebody who is looking out for you. So maybe somebody like me. Um, and uh, it's very important, the more you know, the less uh, anxieties you're going to have about your business. So when you know what's going on, when you have a plan, when you profit uh, well from your practice, you would be able to do well and have, uh, you know, uh, the basic understanding. Education is very important. It never stops and it's going to help you change and improve. Uh, tonight, again, one more time, we're going to talk about profitability. Uh, usually when I review financial statements, that's happening on a daily basis. Usually I have some clients that I speak with, somebody wants to become my client. We want to buy an office. Uh, we want to make sure that pretty much everything is there where it's supposed to be. Uh, and this is when we review financial statements. Uh, and this is usually uh, like a blueprint of a building. It's like, you know, when you take x-rays panel or CT. Um, and this is just to recognize what's going on with the finances. There is no fixed formula. Uh, it, it, it's very, you know, customized. Every, every practice is different, but there are some things that pretty much uh, I can mention uh, that, that are, you know, we can work with, we can, you know, depending on the practice, we can help improve it. So again, one more, one more time, when do we, you know, uh, review financial statements? Just, you know, regular reviews for valuation, selling, buying, improving. Uh, and uh, these days, very important to be in, on top of the expenses because of the increased expenses and some of the revenues that we were not able to generate this year. Uh, just let's, and, and one more time, this is not a tax or accounting lesson. This is just very straightforward. It's like I'm explaining it to, you know, somebody that is a dentist, has a practice, but you know, it's not an expert. So you should not be an expert. You should be somebody who's able to understand what's going on. So you should be familiar a little bit with your tax returns. Just know what type of uh, you know, entity you are. If you're sole proprietor, pretty much you will have a Schedule C. 
if you have a corporation, if it that that's going to be 1120, if it's an S corp 1120S, if it's a partnership 1065, and these are the forms that we use to report the taxes. Tax returns are no source document. So anytime we want to verify, anytime we want to know what's going on, so we need the profit and loss statement. We review payroll reports, we review uh, depreciation schedules, general ledger, bank statements, invoices, and somebody like uh, Debbie is looking at software data. I'll do that as well as in a, as a macro uh, view, you know, uh, maybe 35,000 uh, feet, you know, view uh, uh, for, you know, we would buy a practice or when I, when I want to understand what's going on in the practice, but that's usually not somebody that I would do. That would some be, something be something that a practice consultant does. But I understand it. Uh, good. Now let's go to the major overhead uh, expenses to benchmarking to categories and see where every dollar uh, usually goes. And there is only 100%. So we have 100% to allocate. So if you would generate $100 and take home $100, pretty much 100% profitability, but uh, that's not the case. So what's uh, happening is that you have six major groups and categories, and we wanna make sure that each of those categories has you know, uh, some you know, reasonable percentage assigned so you can act, uh, you can operate profitably. We have the personnel cost, it should be between 25 and 30 hopefully not more than 30, hopefully not less than a certain number, because that would mean that pretty much you are, or you want uh, be able to provide proper services to uh, your patients. So always too good is, too, too much is not good, but too little is not good as well. Facility is about 10%, and that's not just lease. We are going to de into details. Clinical cost, mostly that's lab and supplies. Other expenses and discretionary expenses around 10, 12%. And uh, the main one, uh, that's something that we want to be seeing about 35 to 40% is owner's compensation. And that's very important, one more time, to point out that um, uh, this is a process that we uh, call benchmarking. So what we do is we group, uh, gr uh, we group categories of expenses and then we create that specific category and then we divide it by total collections, total production, and that's how we get our percentage, so the ratio of income. Uh, let's play with a couple of numbers. So this is a very straightforward, you know, regular mature practice, generates about $875,000. It's a practice with 1,200 square feet, four operatories, monthly rate, monthly rate is 4450, and uh, based on these four or five numbers already, we can compute a few metrics. And metrics are very important because that shows us if we are acting profitably, if we are efficient, uh, and if we can be effective. Efficiency is the way we work. Effectiveness, pretty much uh, in, in, in this context that we talk about, it's about, you know, ultimately the dollars that you take home. So uh, each operatory has about 300 square feet. We like it, it's not too small, it's not too big. The production per operatory is about $220,000 and the rent per square feet is 375, 371. So that makes pretty much sense because we see that the total rent is including CAM, triple N, uh, triple net utilities, uh, about 53,400 divided by 875, okay, it's 6.10. And as we mentioned, uh, the um, uh, there is a question about taxes that I'm gonna respond to in a minute. Um, so uh, then we see that pretty much there's 6.10% and that's pretty much okay because that's about five, 6% rent. This is where we wanted it to be. So when you see that, you see that there is uh, more room for profitability. Now take the same metrics. So uh, except you, we increase the rent, total rent to 95,000, divide by 875, so we get 11%. So that 5% is, uh, you know, that shows you that you are less able to, prof to, to profit. 
and how can we help that? So what we usually do is before we purchase a practice, we make sure that those ranges are in order, number one. Um, something else that we do is when we review the practice leases, we make sure that we pay the market price. Uh, and sometimes, you know, there is nothing that we can do, but it's very important to know before we start buying or starting something that this practice starts well. Sometimes I go to practices and, um, you know, I see a, a startup with a rent that is, I can tell them already, you won't profit. In the, five, in the next five to seven years. There is a question with COVID-19 pandemic, does IRS still require estimated quality, quarterly taxes? Yes, it does. The first quarter was postponed to 715. So 715, we had two quarters due and now 915, the third quarter is due. Yes, okay. Uh, good, that was uh, pretty much our example. Now we go to the first category, it's personnel. So personnel is pretty much everybody who works for, for you, except the associate doctor. You can include it into this uh, category if the associate doctor does hygiene regularly. Now see a little bit more breakdown. So we have the gross pay for uh, office and admin, we have for hygienists and we have for dental assistants. Again, we want it to be between 25 and 30%. So we need something between eight to 10% for those areas. And then we are going to add the payroll taxes, um, pension matching, you know, health insurance. It's very important uh, is this area anytime you think about paying bonuses. So my doctor calls me and says, okay, I wanna pay bonuses. Before we pay bonuses, we do some computations and this computation is gonna show us if we pay market, if we pay, pretty much, uh, you know, if we can still profit. And then we have to come up with a very specific schedule to, you know, pay bonuses. Sometimes the bonuses are paid based on the numbers that we have. And sometimes we go back to the staff and say, well, sorry, we cannot pay bonuses. So we have to, uh, you know, base it on more production. Facility is not just the rent. Uh, facility is pretty much, uh, you know, additions to the rent. Facility is uh, when uh, you uh, have uh, depreciation and also facility is sometimes that we compute additionally is the price that you pay for, um, and this is something that we see in the depreciation, uh, is the price that you pay for all of this uh, additionals to your rent. And the, the, just the rent and uh, could can be like 5% uh, because uh, again, this is not just uh, the rent. So we have storage, we have utilities, parking, property taxes, insurances, um, uh, repairs, janitorial, security camera, and as I mentioned, a depreciation as well. So facility means rent additions and some equipments, and we see equipments in depreciation. And the, something that we again need to do uh, excuse me, yeah, need to do is again, make sure that each number, each category has its own um, um, uh, numbers as it owns percentages, because if we don't, uh, if we exceed something, let's say the facility is 15%, again, that's going to be well above the average and the, pro and the um, um, profitability is going to be difficult for us. Next category is clinical cost, mainly dental supplies and lab. Too much dental supplies and lab is, is not gonna let you profit and too little is bad as well. Because usually my experience, uh, those uh, practices that don't pay sufficiently for lab and um, um, supplies, uh, they have a lot of redos, they don't use good material and that's something that's gonna come back uh, Again, so we have the other business costs. Uh, that's any everything else that we cannot include under the first three. So we have the merchant fees, we have the office supplies. That's different than the medical supplies because that would go under um, under clinical costs, advertising, uh, you know, and sometimes uh, uh, anything else that has nothing to do with those three first and main category. So we have advertising. So we wanna make sure that something between three to 5% is paid for advertising because that's the only way to grow. 
Uh, you have the office supplies, bank fees, merchant fees. You don't want to pay too much merchant fees and too much patient financing because those percentages, again, that's the cost of getting patients might not allow you to profit well. Uh, you have the credit card interest, it's the accounting fees, uh, phone, uh, utilities, uh, business insurances. And when I say business insurances, please exclude health insurance and life and disability should not be deducted anyways. Good, I have no questions. I can continue. Discretionary cost is pretty much some of the expenses that you can deduct uh, from your taxes is deductible, but these are actually your benefits as, uh, as an owner doctor. So auto lease, auto expense, uh, travel expenses, business gifts, charitable contribution, and continuing education. Sometimes when I do review some of the books, I see, oh my God, travel expenses, $40,000. So I don't know any dentist that really needs to travel for $40,000. And all of that at the end of the day is not going to help you because uh, that looks bad on your books. Uh, we, I don't even wanna talk about audits and stuff, but you, know, you should be able to at any time be able to, to sell your practice, any time be able to you know, refinance your practice. And uh, if uh, COVID has shown something great to us was having good books is going to help you, you know, also survive in bad times. Good. Now we wanna talk about the main idea today, which is owner's compensation. So we wanna make sure that there is a very nice uh, margin, profit margin for you left. And the only way to get at 35 to 40% is make sure that the prior categories do not exceed 60, 65%. And the only way you can do it is to have everything under control. So what are some of the profits that a owner dentist can make? Well, that's your, uh, and that's, you might not be able to see it because you might only see your uh, net income and your gross pay, but there is a lot more going on in between. So that's the health insurance. Um, and again, um, officers, life insurance and disability insurance should not be deducted from the taxes. Uh, and this is a different topic that we can talk uh, another day. Uh, is the gross pay, is the pension matching, is uh, money that you pay to your spouse or family, especially if they're not working there, is um, health insurance, is the associate pay, very important. Anytime a doctor is providing associate uh, services that actually your profit and your gain, and obviously the, um, the net profits. Again, we have only 100%, that 100% uh, needs to be allocated correctly. Usually you should be doing this on a quarterly basis. Uh, if hopefully you have a good accounting system, you're able to pull that on a, if you have a, a QuickBooks uh, online, usually you can do that on a monthly basis. And that's important that, uh, you know, you have some personalized tax, tax projection that you know what's going on. We don't want you to have any surprises, uh, any underpayments, and that's very important. Good, so far we just talked about, uh, let me see if there are any questions, there are no questions and oh my God, everybody's still here. Uh, I have really, you know, I'm really thankful because it's uh, 8.30. Good, the next step after, you know, we reviewed the numbers and we grouped those uh, uh, categories together is doing some additional work and we talked that normalization of profit and loss statement. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that pretty much uh, we know what's going on with the profitability. So we're adding back all the discretionary, extraordinary, non-cash and personal expenses and benefits. So what we wanna make sure is we can benchmark the practice. Uh, each of the categories is getting together uh, as a group. And then uh, the main question is, uh, if, if we just review our books, is are we profiting? It, are there any pro, uh, you know, areas of concern? If we are, let's say, buying a practice, we wanna plan the due diligence, and we wanna make sure where, where we have to pretty much uh, look a little bit more. Um, something that I can tell you is, as a dentist, you are you know, investing a lot into your education, not just eight, 10 years of your life, but also, I don't know, three, five, six, seven, sometimes $800,000 for fees and tuitions and money that you haven't made. So it's important that you profit well. And the formula is if you wanna buy an office, if you are in a practice 
Number one, you should be able to pay your debt. Number two, you should be able to pay uh, the, the overhead of the practice. Number three, you are an associate dentist, so you should be, you know, at least uh, make money uh, as, uh, as of, of, of you, of, if you would go work for another person. And number four, very important, you should be getting, get, getting paid as an entrepreneur because what is the, what is the why should you uh, own a practice to start with? This is a sample profit and loss statement. As you see here, the net income actually per books or per tax is 40,000. But if we bring back all of the deductions, all of the benefits that you receive as an owner and add them together with the net income, <clears throat> we see that you know based on this calculation, this is a healthy office, this is a happy, practice owner and that's very important good when and, and as you see all of that is flowing to the next page first of all you need to have good books second you need to make sure that uh, you know all of that is uh, you know grouped together there is some ratios uh, computed there is uh, you know the profitability is computed but what is going on you know the, the better books you have the better of, of you know profitability you have the better you would be able to have to keep the, the value of your price high because this is not just based on you know the, the amount of the production and collection it's also based on cash flow so we are valuing a practice based on its cash flow and cash flow is pretty much uh, the practice produces enough cash to pay for all of the expenses for uh, the doctor uh, in the practice and outside of the practice. And based on that, the value of the practice is computed. That's one step. The next step is pretty much when you have good books, when you have good operations, when everything is done properly, you have a valuable office. So let's talk about what is a valuable office. An office is an, a valuable office is a practice that has low liability. Obviously, you will always have liability, but we want the liability to be proper. A liability is a long-term debt. For instance, a bad lease is a bad liability, is a high liability. A bad loan is a bad liability, is a high liability. So let's say that your lease is like 12%. So that's bad because you are stuck with this long-term debt and you can't change it. So if you have uh, you know, negotiated the right lease, you're in the right place, you profit, and then you have low liability, you have a uh, valuable practice. Risk should be low in a practice. Again, if you have, and risk is something, this is a, let's say, uh, a, a shorter term debt, but still it's something that you cannot just fix right away because you need to have, uh, you need to spend some time to fix that. So risk is, for instance, you know, if you don't work with insurances that you like, if you don't have the proper, you know, staff, it's going to take you one, two, three years to, you know, make sure that this is happening. If you take over a practice or if you have overpaid uh, um, um, employees, again, let's go back to 25 to 30%. So if you have an overpaid let's say front office manager, it's, it's going to you know, be very difficult for you to change that. And it's gonna take some time until you are able to profit. And again, this is uh, again, based on what we had uh, computed. Um, again, you see first, pay, first, first, first um, uh, step is to come up with all of this paperwork. Second one is to order them, understand them, uh, put them in the number. First, uh, number three is to make sure that those are uh, that your works that you uh, practice is profitable and now we go to valuation and pretty much this is step by step that's going to help you um, um, you know have a uh, profitable practice um, something that also in addition to that I want to discuss is I did discuss the financial statement but also I want to let you know that we have a little bit more what we need to do sometimes we just have we need to uh, take a look at the practice software. So days that the doctor is working, how much is the hygiene working, number of FMX, number of exams, emergency, and pretty much see if we are operating properly 
and profitably. So I went to a practice, I was doing due diligence. They have seen 4,000 patients and generated a uh, million dollars. So it means that each of these uh, patients generated uh, 200, that the doctor only generated $250 from each of the patients. The same week I went to another practice, they had only 400 patients and they generated a million dollars as well. So uh, they generated 2,500 from each patient, not from each patient, but obviously they had some larger cases. So as you see, so we cannot say, uh, maybe we can say, I don't know, that maybe the doctor in the first practice was not, you know, utilizing all of the opportunities and uh, was not um, 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 uh, operating profitably. Good. Uh, we are going to talk about tax planning uh, pr uh, pretty much next month uh, because that's going to be, um, you know, uh, much more about taxes. Um, but just, just to, you know, a few sentences that I want to, you know, mention about taxes is, uh, again, this is something that, again, based on the good books, sometimes when you have bad books, you're not able to benefit uh, from uh, proper tax deductions. You're not uh, able to benefit from uh, uh, proper tax planning. And most of those people, they just pay too much. Okay. Um, it's a very good time these days. Again, I want to discuss that a little bit, uh, that the rates are very good. So when rates are good, it's a good time to start a business. When rates are good, it's a good time to refinance a practice. And again, our main topic is how to profit, uh, how to uh, operate a dental practice profitably. So something that I assist my clients with is I say, okay, based on your good books, based on your good tax returns, you will be able to profit from the greatest loans ever available in the history. So we are between 2.7, 2.8 and 3, 3.1. Again, have good books, have uh, you know everything ordered well, and you would also be able to profit from, um, uh, from um, you know, uh, having, having the, again, good liabilities. Uh, and that goes back to one of the points that I mentioned before. Also, right now, it's a great, great time to take a look at your leases. Again, we want to profit, we want to operate profitably. So if you have a space that has, you know, something like a recapture clause, like a relocation clause. And again, you uh, were not able to negotiate it, you know, at the beginning. Now your practice is worth less. But that's why it's important uh, that all of that is taken care of on time. Or if you haven't, maybe you could do that now. And uh, very, very important to uh, uh, be on top of that as well. Another area that I want to you know, talk about very shortly is financial planning. Again, let me start from the beginning. Good books, profitable, profitability, good taxes, being able to have every expense where it's supposed to be. And then it flows again to your personal life. So uh, financial planning, um, maybe there are not many financial planners like me. So primarily I'm talking about budgeting. I'm talking about liquidity and debt management. Uh, I have never sold a financial product in my life. So I'm a true, true, true advisor. So the majority of the people are just salespeople. So very important, once everything is properly done, we talk about, you know, um, again, one more time, budgeting, liquidity, debt management, all about the risk. Uh, we make sure that everybody is having proper insurances. We start, you know, uh, working on our goals, retirement, college, uh, and, and, and very, very important for every dentist to make sure be on top of the estate planning and uh, hopefully you get to become an investor and that just takes some time. And if you are an associate dentist, very important, my, it's, it's an opinion, you know, first of all, to make sure that you have a business, generate money and then you can buy a house and then you can, you know, pay your student loans then plan for retirement and hopefully uh, you can also uh, help your kids. A few financial mistakes uh, that, you know, dentists usually do is, you know, they buy their, 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 their practices too late. Uh, they buy too expensive stuff, you know, uh, having credit card debt and uh, having no 
liquidity. Uh, also, uh, some of my clients, unfortunately as well, but you know, I just can mention it, they built expensive offices. Uh, very, very bad is when you have no proper advice. So uh, good advice is, you know, sometimes takes me five minutes, 10 minutes to discuss certain things with uh, some of my clients, but that's going to give them direction. Good advice to make sure to make uh, good planning. Estate planning is very important. Financial planning is very important. And tax planning is very important. And all of that, honestly, honestly, is no rocket science. You know, stuff in the dentistry, you know, financial tax accounting is very simple. I used to do state and local taxes, uh, help with litigation stuff. That's difficult. Uh, but, you know, simple taxes for one, two, three, five dentistry locations, very easy. Um, also, something that I see is a lot of people are too concerned with taxes only and just don't see the big picture. Don't see, you know, if you want to just save taxes and go maximum on deductions, you won't be able to see uh, to show cash flow and be an investor. Uh, insurances are very important. It's important that nobody that is in a dentistry in a dentistry business is underinsured. Uh, also, on the one hand, on the other hand, uh, I do see some very bad insurances out there. So probably uh, whole life insurance is a bad idea. Um, these universal life insurances are a bad idea because you overpay and you are underinsured. Uh, and hopefully nobody gets a divorce. Uh, hopefully you file your taxes on time. Hopefully you have good accountants and also uh, be on top of, uh, you know, your money, your expenses, your budget. Very important in a dental practice is to have an employee handbook. It's very important to be on top of HR. So some of the, you know, HR companies or some of the payroll companies, they're just happy with I-9 and W-4. But, you know, the better your uh, employee file, the better or you probably won't ever have any issues with employees. And issues with employees, these are some of the uh, pretty much issues that are not letting you profit well. Because, you know, when you have bad employees or you, when you have litigation with employees, when you have lawsuits, you have to pay them and you don't profit well. Good, so that's my last slide, how to work with me. Everybody gets an initial consult, free consult. Uh, uh, we do provide tax accounting and consulting services. I assist uh, with due diligence, with valuation. If you wanna start a practice, if you wanna buy a practice or sell a practice, and also I am assisting with all kinds of uh, comprehensive financial planning. Okay, there is a question. What do you mean by buying a practice too late? The later, you know, you become a practice owner, the later you start, uh, you know, uh, profiting from your own hard work. So you work for somebody else, he pays you, she pays you and profits uh, from your hard work. So it's better you profit from your own hard work. Good, that was it for me. Um, Debbie, I have no other Q and A's. Anything else you want to add tonight, Debbie? You're muted. You have to unmute. Debbie, please unmute. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate you talking about the bonuses and I, it was very informative from, I thought, from my perspective. Um, so many times, well, I always see doctors, you know, once they get a plan and they're working the plan, they are excited and they want their team to be rewarded and they, have a knee jerk reaction to implement a bonus. And I think there take, it takes a strategy like you mentioned. Yeah, and that's very important. Again, I'm a, I'm a fan of bonuses because if you don't pay bonuses, uh, employees won't care. Uh, I'm a fan of uh, 401k profit sharing plans, but mm -hmm. you need to be able to afford it so, and that's something that you can have. And I mean, the name is great, profit sharing. <laughs> Let's, let us all make money and then share it. And uh, that, that's why pretty much we do discuss it in our meetings sometimes. So there, if there is no money, there is no plan. If there is no right. money, there are no bonuses. And right. it's all about communication. Communication is very important. Uh, and that's going to pretty much, uh, you know, help convey, uh, you know, to your employees. If you're a good employee, you know, well, uh, 
we, we would love to pay you as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, my wife, office manager, she's been working with the prior owner for 25, 23 years now with my wife for six years. Yeah. And pretty much we plan for another 20, 25 years for her and some other employees. So very important to, to so I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So we have no other questions. Thank you very much. Uh, next week, I'm going to have two webinars with Amy Borden. She's a demo attorney and also with DDS Match. Very valuable people. Uh, Debbie, thanks much. Uh, have a great night in Oregon and yes, have a great night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank Hope you. Hope to talk to you soon. Thanks. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.